Anthony. Sweetheart. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, Tully is in a, he's on holiday. He's on holiday and the show must go on because we got a guest. Dr. Drew Penske is here, everybody. How are you, man? Hell yeah. I'm good. Hell yeah. Yeah. You and I can carry this. Although I miss Tully, you you and I can carry it. Yeah. 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 He knows. (laughs) And he needs a break. He's on vacation, on holiday, as you Australians would say. Yeah, we say man. we say on vacation. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty American, so I said vacation. Wait, wait, you. I saw you on something the other day. You were going, "What the fuck's the matter with me? I've been here for thirty years." Stop cussing. We're oh. on YouTube. Ah, you just uh, ruined. Do we stream it? Do we streaming? Both, but oh, the, so this is live. Okay, yeah, this yeah. This is gonna be. This is like if you're a member of the Patreon, patreoncom slash yeah. mate, you can watch us record this exclusive podcast, and then you could actually text us and call us with live questions that will then be on the podcast that you can get on where all podcasts are available. This is the greatest commercial I've ever done. Well done. Uh, but you Go said, ahead. Well, you said where the, what the f is wrong with me? I've been here for thirty years. And I still have this heavy Australian accent. Yeah. I thought that is interesting. It is right. Yeah, I don't talk to a it's, lot it's, of Australians. It's not a mild accent. It's it's like you, you you know it right away. Yeah, it is it has modified. It's funny, I, I bumped into a few Australians that have been here for over ten years and they are the hardest to understand out of all uh accents because I'm tuning into Australian and then you warp one word and you lose me. Yes. And they were yeah. saying the same thing. I was like they were like, how long have you been here? And I was like, 33 years. And they're like, how long have you been here? It's like 10 years. And I'm like, I, 10 years. I'm like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. I don't think you might be lying. It throws people off. But you have sure. to, it's it's really an interesting thing about accents. You have to like, you're going to have to get like a teacher and train it away. They don't go yeah. away by themselves. No, I can and, only do it if I pretend I'm Tony Hawk. And it's, <laughs> and it's so funny. I wanted to, uh, it's weird to me how, how so many Australian actresses can do american accents so freaking well do you really think so though because to me i catch it uh i have trouble catching it and i'm always shocked when i hear how they speak when they're guard you know when they're speaking their natural yeah 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 no you are right it is impressive if they can do that all the time why don't they just do it they live here yeah i i have a a danish friend that has Uh an american accent a Mm. danish accent and he lived in england for a long time before he moved to america and he can do an english accent so either all in english there are people on uh I guess it's TikTok now that imitate all kinds of accents. They're like accent experts now. Yeah. It's very interesting. I, I, I never think really that's thought the about easiest it. way to learn to do an accent is to copy somebody's movie stuff. Probably. Like I, I think I learned American accent from Metallica. Oh no kidding. That's yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Master. Yeah. Know? So, so Master. So <laughs> be weird so, if he said Master, Master. <laughs> well they just be that, pain. You know, that like hard the, R sound. You can do it. Yeah. Do it more. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll do it, <laughs> but the, but it's, I was gonna it, it call. It feels weird, Drew. Weird. <laughs> it it it's, it it not only feels weird. It it sounds weird to it hear does, you right? speak that it way. I don't like it. I don't sure. like it. See, that's yeah. why I go back to it because I good. make people get awkward. It's good. It's your own thing. Relax, homies. So I was gonna call. Uh, I'm gonna do it on the way home too. Remember Bert Dubrow, my my uh, producer over at HLN. Yeah. I was I was just gonna I, I just tell him I just saw Jason. He he brings you up once in a while. That's weird. Yeah. Well, it's weird, but he he thought you were great. And Bert's so, a weird one. Bert or Bert? Bert. Bert. Yeah. Bert. Bert. <laughs> it sounds, you guys, you go too far, you know, because his Bert. name's Bert and you're all Bert. <laughs> Americans People, drag it hard. We, it's been the back of our throat. People and, don't know. And cheese, you know, cheese. Oh, it's yeah, like, in the front. down, man. It's just cheese. I just remember, I was thinking back in the driving in here back to those days when we would stick, stick you in a window to comment with us. Oh, remember on the HLN show? Oh, that, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, the yeah. satellite, it just was such an interesting. That show would have been so well during COVID and all these other things. That was the that was no. the most pressure, the most. I love you, and it's so cool that you had me there, but I still couldn't. I was like, I shouldn't be here. Yeah, like, but that's what was great. You just go look at me, and you smack your head. Look at what's on my head. We were like, yeah, that's why you were here, Jason. We want to hear what you have to say. There were some really nice people there. I still, I love Sam Shocker. There's like a bunch of people that I thought were really good people from yeah. that show. She should. Uh, you should get her to come to the next uh, Ellis Mania so she can do the Shocker thing that she did. Yeah, I don't know about Ellis Mania anymore. What? Because of you, you can't fight anymore, or what? 
Uh, that and I just, I need time. I need time to. You mean you couldn't do one once a year? I could, but it, it, I got tied in with somebody else that wanted to do it. And then they did like a rush job of one and, uh. and, uh, they were really mad at the way I handled it. And uh -oh. I think it was like, well, we had, uh, like a month to sell tickets and I would never do an Alice Mania in 30 days. That's right. Not enough time. I think people would really miss it. And it didn't, didn't do that. that well. And he blamed it all on me uh. and my, my depression. And I was going through it. And, uh, instead of arguing, I just said, sorry. Yeah. And I, cause I, I don't, I'm not, I wasn't sure if it was all my fault. Yeah. So I just said, sorry. And then, you know, he's like, you weren't nice to people at the event. And, what? And, well, because it was half his fan base. Oh. It was mainly his fan base because uh. my fans didn't go because they know that it's got a different name. Uh. They're not a huge fan of the other guy. Yeah. But also my event was, I got into fighting and I wanted people to experience it, but I wanted people to experience it and not get really hurt. Yeah. I was willing to put my life on the line yeah. for it, but I didn't advise anybody else to do so. No, you, la listen, the last one, you were, you were on people that were hitting in the head. Right, so yeah. so this one, there were a few people there that were just looking to hurt people and not get hurt. Yeah, that's not good. And I I found that to be, I took it offensively. Yeah. Like I was not happy with those people. Yeah. And then a few people were hitting people after I said stop. Oh, that's not good. And then they made some comments afterwards, like, yeah, you know, screw your event. I was just there to smash people, and and ah. and he was always sort of telling people one side of the story and to me alice mania was and still is it's my fans we're family and if you want to have a fight where you know it's very nerve-wracking you can make weight you can get in the best shape you can you train for a month or two maybe three depending but, but on the, the amateur-esque quality is what makes it fun right but i never put anybody that was uh, it was an even matchup right and if anybody got stung i stopped it yeah and it wasn't it was it just seemed like there were people last minute people uh and i and i never allowed that at, at prior events because last minute people could be intoxicated right and which and, they were and his ones <laughs> his yeah. events that i did at his yeah. thing there i would say 80 percent of them were intoxicated and, and lied to me uh. and then after the event is like yeah i've been on acid all day oh like, my god i'm like i i can't uh. this is no longer enjoyable it's enjoyable to me i'm uh. scared yeah for everybody and it made it it was such a bad taste that I need time. Okay, got it. To but, redo it, and I need to rebuild. Like this is, it hasn't been a glorious ride since Sirius ended, and of course the the uh, the COVID thing yeah. made you know. I mean, the Hard Rock went under, and and uh, at one point <clears throat> the uh, Virgin offered me a deal, and the person I was going to fight couldn't make it, and then they just dropped me. Mm. So then these other places that wanted to do the event. They didn't know the event, you know. They didn't have enough seating, or or it was just like uh, I'm trying to convince people again that Alice Mania is successful after it had been successful for 20 years, and yeah, I'm yeah. I was like I don't really have it in me, mm. so I feel like um, that's your depression. Yeah, divorce. Yeah, and yeah. And, and financial stuff, and it was so just how like you, how are you and Katie doing? I'm happy for her, and it's been it was hard. I wouldn't have probably admitted that maybe three weeks ago, mm. but I'm happy for her and um. These things happen for a reason, and I you, made you, a lot of mistakes. I'm not blaming myself 100%, but I don't really care who's to blame anymore. I just want her to be happy, and I want me to be happy, and I'm working really hard on my sobriety, which means falling in love with somebody is just a part of my addiction because yeah. now I don't have marijuana, I don't have kratom, I don't yeah. have alcohol or ketamine or anything else that yeah, you can get you my can, You can on. put sex in there if you want. Right, yeah. so now I have no dating apps. I don't Good. do people random people anymore good, good i know a lot of people are trying to call me right now to ask true a question but just give me like 15 minutes okay so we can chat yeah so i've just been cleaning up my life i'm learning how to take care of five dogs a cat and a dragon by myself um you know i'm really trying to be around my ch children as much as well, i that's can good. i've seen more uh, than my instagram and because stuff I, I think i've let that go i think uh, mm. they're, they're fine like if they don't want to come over then no no harm no foul and and now realizing, you know, I mean, the disease that I have and the the traits that come with it, yeah. the 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 damage that I've done to so many people and all, all the people that I care about, you know, and and I think I've been really sad about that. But now I'm 
now I'm being active about changing that. And I know, I've, I know I've got a long way to go. I know it's not going to turn around. I know that everyone's not going to be like, oh man, you're sober 28 days. Let's hang out. Like I know that's that that's not what's going to happen. Uh. And I'm okay with that. Um, but I really am working every day to be clearly who I am. And I know that I'm full of love and I, and I want to love people and I know I can help a lot of people. And I, and I want to be in a, in that stable position to do so it so mainly it's just work on myself every day try to uh understand like when i react to things the reasons why mm. and it, i'm not gonna lie it's been the hardest month of my life and i've had some hard yeah. times in my life but yeah. this has been the hardest because i have to i have to face who i am and the th and the mistakes that i've made and some of them are uh you, you that some of these people are never going to come back you know and i have to live with that these were people you cared a lot about mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. yeah but um and because of things you did in mm -hmm. sort of in your illness my yeah. addictions yeah yeah like if i can't do this then i'm gonna do something else and if yeah. it's like if marijuana could walk up and drop its pants i'd smoke it <laughs> you know what i mean yes and dude. and and that Fantastic. and that yeah. that came to me several times with pants on if you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and i couldn't say no to it because of my addictions, no. not even understanding how much hurt I'm going to put on somebody else for these actions because my addiction would would not allow that thought to run through my mind. Mm. If it ran through my mind, I wouldn't have acted on it. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, it's there. I can have it. I'll take it and I'll, and I'll deal with it. I'll deal with the, 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 the drama and the hell that I caused somebody after the fact. And, you know, that's why Katie left. Mm. And and also from being numbed from this Kratom stuff, I agreed and thought it was a good idea that she left because I didn't have it in me to want to continue a relationship. Mm. I was on the couch. The most energy I could do was this show, then switch off again. Mm. That's all I had for anybody. Mm. I could do stand up, you know, I had to be high before it, high after it, high on the way there. High with the cannabis or with the both. Kratom or both, yeah. So it just got to the point where none of it was doing its job anymore and it, and you can you can uh you can blank it out as much as you want but when you're sitting in the damage there was no you know, i don't have money to go on vacation and pretend it's not happening mm -hmm. i don't have money to go buy a car or go buy something shiny or you know go that's, take take a bunch of girls somewhere and have sex still, with them all still the Right, but I, uh, if I, this is what I'm saying, it's it's good that this happened, right? You because can't I have, I can't hide. I have nothing left to hide with, except marijuana and kratom. And then it got to the point where they weren't doing their job anymore. Mm. They were just making it more apparent that I'm getting out of shape. Uh, I'm 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 short fused. Um, I'm living in self pity, mm. and 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 my ego is making me hate myself more and more every so day. So what are we doing? Those two things. What are we doing with that? Self pity. Self pity and your ego hating you. I'm. I work very hard every morning. Instead of looking at my phone, I I I check this quote thing for the AA thing, and mm -hmm. then I I pray. Okay. And I meditate. Do you call somebody? A sponsor or do you have phone numbers? I have a sponsor. I, we talk every day. Okay. And do you ha call anybody else when you feel I, uh, in that space? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have I have I felt sorry for myself and not reached out to anybody for 24 hours? Yes, I have. But then the next day I realized that what I did and – well, not even that. No, by the end of the day, mm. I will reach out to my sponsor and go, sorry, I've been having a bad day and I was kind of ducking it. You sort of remind me of somebody with an eating disorder, the way you use your self-loathing. Mm -hmm. It's like a deprivation, like the deprivation replaces the high. I think the biggest thing for me was Thanksgiving. I was by myself. Mm. I've done a lot of time in this house by myself in the backyard, real dark, mm. like to the point where it reminded me, of, I've hit my head a few times where instead of being out, out, I've hit my head where I can feel like I'm going into unconsciousness mm -hmm. and I'll start doing some deep breaths and I feel the panic of going into unconsciousness again. And there was a couple of times, like one time when I went to hospital getting knocked out, I felt like something was suffocating me and I felt like death was coming. Mm. And I was in and out of consciousness all day and I woke up in a hospital. I got an ambulance there, like it was a real hard one. 
had seizures and stuff. Who did that? I did it. I jumped off a wall into a ah, ramp. Yeah. Okay. No, nobody hit me. Okay. With the depression and just running this scenario in my head, like I think the biggest thing for me, I don't mind admitting it, she's moved on. And what what did what have you done? You're still here, living in the sorrow of her when it's completely done. It's over. Like you haven't moved on. So I I, I instead of running, I sat with it. And I, and did I make it worse because of my self pity? Hell yeah, I made it way worse than what it actually is. Like I'm sure she still cares for me, but I made it like nobody does anymore. This well, I remember when you ended your first marriage. How you that the world there was n no possibility you'd get over it as yeah. far as you were concerned. Yeah, and yet you ended up in a better place. That was one thing that I was clinging to. Because I remember, no offense to her, we were not compatible in no, any way. No, that was she not good. She is so much better off with her guy. Yeah. I, I'm so much better but, off. But even it may be the same thing with it may be the same thing with Katie in terms of who you're going to be as a sober person. Well, that's the thing that I'm starting to realize, which yeah. is making me feel a hell of a lot better. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very happy that I lived in this sorrow for those 20 or so days where I thought, I was like, if this gets any lower... I'm going to go insane. Well, you have to have the grief, right? It's grief. Right, that's right. what it is. And you have to... I, but I, I got it out, Drew. The, that's the other thing. Without the marijuana, it wouldn't have come out. Like, it, it came pouring out to the point where it was scaring me. That I, I'm like, how can you cry this much in such a way that you are hysterical? Mm. Like, you're... you're in, you, if, if there was a camera right now, you're insane. You've gone insane. Like, somebody needs to put you in hospital because you have lost it. Mm. But it needed to come out. It, it ne I needed to get it all out. I know there's more, but the main, this real pain of like my childhood and all these things mm. are all things that I've covered up by masking it with like even even doing cool stuff, yeah. showing off, of course, having people pay attention to me. It's another way of masking what what the pain is. Like I won't face it. Mm. So sitting with it and then getting used to it, it's kind of like at first. It, it, like if you get in the water with a shark and you're like, whoa, it's a shark. But then if you hang out for a while, you start to get used to it. Mm. So I'm like, here comes the pain. Here comes the sorrow and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, what is it? What is it exactly? What is the bit that is bothering you so much? Analyze it. You know, like, okay, it happened. Now what are you going to do? Like if you keep living here, because it's not even a reality anymore, which is something that I think I took a long time to realize. It's, yeah. This is me bringing me down yeah so so wake up you know and and start like seeing the sun yeah you know stop like living in the dark and it will come over you in waves periodically oh yeah that's what yeah. grief is it just comes then it goes well now i let it happen yeah if i cry it's that's oh you're a put yeah maybe i am a pussy no i don't care what you God, think here we go again with that i only shit. care about being healthy and being happy so if i need to cry i'm gonna cry and if I have to cry like real crazy, like, well, then that means I really needed to get it out. Yeah. So I'm going to get it out. And like I said, going to meetings, talking to people, hearing other people talk, you know, the, I do the audio book because reading, I can barely make sense of it because I'm such a terrible reader, but mm. it just keeps making things easier and making me appreciate little things. I have little bump, I have bumps in the day just like I used to, but I also have moments of like godlike feelings where I feel like I want to cry because I'm happy mm. because I'm so lucky to be here mm. right now. I don't care about tomorrow. I feel like God is shining on me and I, and, and I never felt like that mm. ever. And I don't need any cool, I don't need to do a trick. I don't need everybody to download this. If you want to, that'd be great. But if you don't, <laughs> I, I'm okay. Do you, do you get, to appreciate all you've done and brought to other people and stuff? Do you, you get a sense of uh, gratitude for that stuff? It's funny when you say that. I, I feel all I'm thinking about lately is p the position I'm in and the more clarity I get, how many people I can help. But okay. I haven't really okay. thought about the people that I've already helped. The the one thing I worry about with you is... Just one uh, thing. Yeah, it's really just one thing though, really. <laughs> well, it, I'm not used to you wearing black fingernail polish and that's always a... It's a, dark purple. Okay, it's, it's different not, than black. I'm not. It's different than black. It's not. I'm not dark. Okay, because I, I, I see. I catch that stuff. And I'm stylish and a little bit gay. Okay, <laughs> okay. That, yeah. That's your half mo hand. It's yeah, I don't. I like. I don't know why. I don't want these two <laughs> fingers painted anymore. This is like some weird thing that I got from uh, this nobody guy on John Wick. 
I really like John Wick, but I don't. Uh, you're you're right. I don't want to get evil yeah. tattoos anymore. Okay. I'm not attracted to good evil. Like I Dark. don't want to get an upside down cross. Right. Um, like I saw some really cool upside down cross earrings the other day, mm. and I was like, man, if they were upright, I would have got it. Mm. Even mm. though, don't get it. I don't. If you believe in Jesus, that's cool, man. I believe in Jesus too. He seemed like a pretty cool guy. But I don't I'm not I'm not a Bible guy. To me, I went to one meeting and in the church it said on the back it said, God is love. And I don't it, each to their own, but to me, God is love. I don't, it's not a person, there's no beard for me. It's just my higher power is love. And it, it, whatever works for you is is fine. I don't care. But for me, that's ha- that's my religion is love. It's where I, I get to experience something I call spirituals with other people. That's when I start to feel like a transcendent something. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's being around that kind of communion you can have with another human. Yeah, I just want to love people and be loved, and I want to see everybody love each other. But, but I haven't What's yet. What's my problem? Expressed what I was worried about. Yeah. <laughs> so what you 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 tend to complain about depression more than I'm comfortable with. Like it makes me feel a little bit like, oh, I worry about CTE with you and depression. Yeah. Right? That's what I worry about. So so I think the important thing is if this goes on two months, let's let's agree to maybe look into that. No. No? No, I'm not taking any depression. All right. Then at least what about uh, some more kind of like aerobic exercise, that kind of thing. I'm is doing it? I'm doing really good. Okay, good. I'm talking about uh, still detoxing. Mm. It was that's and I was, was doing a lot of time by myself yeah. detoxing. That's bad. Instead of going to rehab, I sat here and took it. And I know that when you go to rehab, they give you some stuff to take the edge off. But I don't want to. I didn't want to. I look if it had got any part, worse. This, this is the other thing that bothers me. I would have gone, dude. This, I would have gone. I understand. We talked about it. But the other thing that bothers me is how you punish yourself. That's it. That's the other thing. I, I, I almost, yeah. like I said, it feels like an eating disorder almost, like where, where you de- de- deprivation and self, self-loathing becomes the, the, the new way of dealing, you know, getting high. Man, I thought I was pretty happy. Okay, good. That's, I'm not saying, I'm not. I'm just talking about the, the I'm not, road I'm not, to, to today. All good. I'm all, doing pretty good. I would agree. Like I woke up and cleaned my agree. house and talked to my cat and I got crickets for my dragon and good. I talked to him and. Cool. We're all we're all hanging out. I, I I know a girl. She painted my nails. She's super hot. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm not like, oh my god. I'm 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 like this is very new, and I, nobody needs to be jumping into anything crazy. That's for sure. But I enjoy your company, and she enjoys mine. And I'm not on dating apps. I'm not good doing any stuff. There's that, a reason we want you not to have a relationship in that first year. Yeah, I know. You, you grow a lot. I've and- heard. You grow a lot, and the relationship holds you in a certain. I kind of like it. I kind of like driving in my car by myself, mm. and I kind of like sleeping in my bed in the middle. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't mind every now and then if someone's there, but I also kind of like it when they leave. <laughs> can't believe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying. I can't wait to get the. Re- I'm trying to be smart and not train as soon as I'm not. I don't have the cold anymore. Mm. I want to wait a couple of days, but. I'm going to the Hollywood Gold, so I'm signing up there because Venice is too far. Good. And I'm going to get jacked. Good. And I've already lost like 15 pounds. Oh, my gosh, great. And then I'm going to Muay Thai, Saxon's Muay Thai, which is uh, so punishing that I couldn't walk for a week the first time I went there. So I'm like, okay, baby step that bad boy. And I'm going to my boxing coach. And then I also go to my old boxing coach who now trains my son. So I train with him. So I'm hanging out with my son as well. So I'm, I'm things are it's good. Things are good. It's good. Yeah, yeah you're doing cool. You're doing yeah. really good. I mean, and and you know, then in terms of sobriety generally, it's it's never it's rarely an event a straight road to sobriety. It's usually no. in and out and in and out. And finally, like you get serious at a certain point. That's yeah. Yeah. I believe where I'm at right yeah. now. It seems like it. Yeah, my son said to me after two weeks that he was proud of me. Yeah, and that one is if I ever feel like there's a tough moment and. My addiction says, you know what? It fix this. I hear that, and I have no. Good. I actually had a bunch of. You would have definitely been mad at me. I had tons <laughs> of marijuana in the house, all different kinds of edibles and all that stuff. Mm. And I gave it to all. I cleaned it all up yesterday and put it all in a, it was a giant box. I had no. <laughs> I idea. don't get mad at anyway for anything. Well, I, I worry saying, about you. You know, it's not a good idea to yeah, have it. In not the a house, good idea. Right? Exactly. So yeah, the kratom was gone like a month ago, but the weed. It was so hard because mm. it was so much money. And I'm like, I can't pour the weed in the trash. 
I've got to give it to somebody that doesn't have a problem with it, and then they can do what they want with it. So when, it's when, gone. When my daughter got sober, she, it was Christmas Eve, and she went to a meeting that night, and I thought, wow, she is serious. And, and yeah. the next day, went to a meeting, and didn't miss yeah. a meeting for a year. Right. And I was like, oh, that's that's the deal. That's the real deal. The first time I went to meetings, I was I went proud of her. I told her that. Now I go, like, if I miss a day, it's rare, but Good. I'll do a Zoom one if I have Good. to. But I, I, Fine. I, I'm definitely in. I'm doing work from the book every day. It's good. Yeah. Step work. Step work. I'm no, doing no. the work. It's like, how'd you get good at skateboarding, Jason? Did, Did the you work. go to the ramp once a week? Yeah. No, dude, you didn't. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's do the step. No steps. No, no 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 sponsor. No recovery. Really is what it boils down. If you're not doing right. the step work with somebody, it's not really not really happening. Right. I want to bring up because I did tweet something about the Kratom and I got a lot of reactions, some positive, but mainly negative. And I know it's Twitter. A lot of people like to troll and all that kind of stuff, but it seemed like a lot of people don't know that much about it. But and just, it's very simple. Kratom is a weak opiate. And if right. we don't, if people don't understand now what opiates are and what they do to people, uh, let me introduce you to Matthew Perry and all the, and Prince and all the people that have died of opiate use. Right. And the uh, upbeat use disorder. And that's Kratom because, yes, you can maintain for quite a little while and then it progresses. Yeah. So I know that, you know, some people out there can have a beer and yeah. they seem to be fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying like, you know, for everybody on the planet, don't ever do it. I know that there's people that have, are, are in chronic pain and and there's... That's there's, a different situation. Right. Yeah. That, that, that requires careful management. But even that these days, buprenorphine is so much better medicine for chronic pain. What was that? Buprenorphine, Subutex. Oh, okay, it's right. It's so good for chronic pain. See, I had somebody tell me that they were going to do Subutex to get off Kratom because yeah, they weren't they, sure if they were going to make it. They do and it. as a person that got off it, I can tell you, I'm not lying, you guys. Like, it was it was one of the hardest, most embarrassing, like, because I'm older mm -hmm. and I've been through addiction and to be that tweaked out on something that you get uh -huh. at the weed store or the gas station, it was really hard for me to take. Like, I got all these people that look up to me and I'm like shaking and like uncontrollable sweats not to mention the mind games my mind is attacking me yeah. and, and, and i and because of the stuff and and that's being the part alone. people don't get the desperation yeah and then this effed up thinking the thinking is the problem i can't believe you're doing it no, I, no. i'm with you what's happening so <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeez, trained with the best <laughs> So what what is this? So I, I don't I, know why we, you keep pulling that because we were we were talking about Ellis Mania. And you know what? It's for people that say f bombs on the freaking yeah, show. Yeah, I have to bend over and yeah. take it. All right, <laughs> spank so, yourself because I'm not doing it. So <laughs> thank you. So weird. I just remembered the new addition to Ellis Mania where you had people smacking each other, and I thought, oh, maybe there's something to do with that. No, I think that might have been what it was for. Ah, um, I need a. I had a mistress for a little bit. And maybe I was getting a little into the BDSM I, thing, I see, and I, see, I, see. And I saw that at the at the sex store, and was Got like, it. "I'm gonna I'm gonna hit somebody in the booty with it, leave some marks." Yeah, but I, I don't know. Stop. I'm less gay now but, too. That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder what that is. I, it might be a phase, but I well, think I think it's I don't. Oh, here's what I I'm pretty sure what it is. Hmm. I think I did a lot of sex because it's a part of my addiction to mm. run. Like whenever I'm having sex, I'm not thinking about the pains of my existence. Yeah. And now that I'm facing them all and, and, and dealing with them, that kind of sex no longer interests me. I'm well, not saying I'm straight by any means. I'm just saying Yeah, but that, you, you were getting high from it somehow. And, you, yeah. now, and now you're going to consolidate, right? You're going to, your self sense yourself is going to get more consolidated, yeah. integrated. And that may include, you know, male and men and women. I don't know, but it's going to be more stable, yeah. and you're going to be better able to be present and, and to have real intimacy. Yeah, and real intimacy may not include some of this stuff because this gets right. Like, it can be fine. It's great. It's fun. I don't want to take it away from you. If you want to do it, but it can get in the way of intimacy sometimes. It definitely doesn't like to say that it might might be there or might not be there. I think old me would find that to be annoying. <laughs> so it's just there. Don't say that it's going to go. It's just there. Yeah. Now, okay. now yeah. it's like if it's there later yeah. in life, great. If it's not, great. But okay. Right so now, what you're saying, this is really important. Yeah. Because what you're saying, and this is this is a really important key experience of of real growth in mental health treatment. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to become 
whoever you're supposed to be. Yeah. You and it and it's and there'll be a certain amount of grief with that too because you yeah. leave your old self behind. Yeah. It goes away and you become whatever it is you're meant to be. God's will. And, and you become that. That's all. Uh, and that, that may include leaving marks in someone's ass. I don't know. Or, yeah. And it may. Man, I don't know. It's gonna be what's gonna be. You know. Yeah. And you have to be open to that. If it is, if it is over for that, it's not like I didn't have a good run. Right. <laughs> You know, that's right. You're, well, this is that is to me, that's kind of intriguing, which is, you know, how do you how do you integrate your addictive years into your current sense of yourself in sobriety? Which really is really interesting, what, to which me. is when you said the uh, the food addiction. Yeah, that's the thing that I think you're, you're very, that I relate that a lot with my sex addiction. Yeah, because that, you know, like, do I have to smoke weed or some kind of THC? No, I don't. I don't have to. That can stay out and so can alcohol, so can Kratom and all the other stuff. But sex, like, I, I want to love somebody and they're, and they're yeah. going to love me and I want to have sexual relations with yeah. them. But just like what's what scale to me so far, it's very obvious which one is good and which one isn't. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think depending on my partner later on down the road, if my partner is by and they want to do something with somebody else, they, they, it's going to put a, it's not going to be, yeah, let's do it. It's right. going to be like, we got to really sit down. Right. We got to, we're going to have to write this down. Well, like because we're going to have to write I, down I think, the, good, the goods and the bads that, and the reasons why I would want to do this and why I would not want to do this before I can co-sign. It. You bring another person into a, an intimate relationship and you diminish the primary intimacy right. and, and it destabilizes it. But to me, it's hard enough to have a, two people to have a relationship. See, that's the you thing bring a with Katie person. that I figured out is that relationship was always you can have other people. Yeah. So that meant that I could always run when when needed. Yeah. But that was why it was so attractive to me. Because right. I'm like, well, if I get to... It's like, you know, I, when I broke up with the kid's mom, yeah. she was not going to let me drink and smoke weed. Uh. One of the first things my baby mama said, she saw a photo that I posted and there was smoke in the background. And she was like, Daddy, are you okay? And I was like, why? Well, yeah, why? Mm. It's like, I saw smoke in the background. I just want to make sure you're okay. They're I know, in. And I know, I know now, yeah. like... So many years later, yeah, that she was like, he's not gonna be there for the kids if he goes down that road. Not, not as good as he could be, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, she knew. Yeah, because she's a really smart person, and I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like, but, I, I got this under control, and then the show got bigger and bigger, and I was like, there's your proof. Like, if I'm so bad, how come I'm? How come I'm the number two sh show on Sirius XM, and I make millions of dollars? smoke mm. it's all bullshit like it was if it was a curse which is why this is a gift that's why like the show emptying out people going whoa easy on the gay or easy on this and me losing fans and people being mad at me and money going away and like oh my god this is all disappearing it was a gift because mm. it was like you gotta you gotta take a look at yourself man like you're not Mr. Magic. Everything you touch does not turn to gold. You're wrong. You're making mistakes. This is your fault. Like, how do you rectify mm, all this stuff? I, be careful again. Now you get you get into this. Not all of it. Yeah. I got to take your, responsibility. I don't care if everybody else. I know that there's a lot of people that made, that had their, that did a lot of things that they made a lot of mistakes that made my life very difficult. Mm. But I, if they want to come to me and apologize down the road, great. I would look forward to it. But, for me to get better, I don't care about that. I only care about what my part was, yeah. And and right. how can I rectify that? And how can I not repeat it? Is yeah. The main thing. Yeah. And the the time for amends is down the road. A yeah, little I know. Too. It's 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 you got to go slow with. This, I know. Right? I'm. I know. I'm only. I'm nowhere near that one. I mean, I have been reading. I called. I told. I called my sponsor after the step four on audio book, and I was mm. like, Oh my god, I'm so screwed. Why? Because they just all the traits. That you have, yeah. and they were just slapping me in the face in the car, where I was like, "Oh, I'm like, <laughs> that, oh, that one man. too! <laughs> oh, that one! I'm so like that! I do that! Ah!" Oh. And then I thought of like an actual like in a scenario where I screwed it all, yeah. and I was like, "That's your, that wasn't you!" And you and you backed yourself so hard on it, you were like, "Moron!" 
I know you are stupid. And it was like, no, dude, that was all you. So the way I think about this is you're, you're not responsible for your illness. You're responsible for your recovery. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't, you know, it t- takes what it takes to get to the recovery part, but if yeah. you don't take that seriously, then, th- then it's on you, whatever happens next. Right. Cause you got, you it, more will happen. Well, here we are. But once you really understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, here we are. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I see you. Hmm. Yeah. You've always been there for me, man. Mm-hmm. Even when I was blurry, I knew you were there for me. I, I, I try to understand what is in our relationship. You know what it is? Because you're, you're the... You're... <laughs> because we're sexually attracted to each other. Jerk. No, it isn't that. <laughs> it, that's my wife said that. It isn't why, that. Why'd she say that? I know. It seemed that is my, not true. I, I know. It was so Stop funny when that. she did it. That's weird. Ew. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> not my God. God. You know what it is? It's your, your everything or a lot of things, not me. You're, you're, you're not me in so many ways that I find intriguing. And yet I feel like at our core, there's some weird little similarity in our, in our tenderest sort selves. Isn't that you funny? You think it's because we, we want to help people? We'll find out as you, you get really better. you really want to help people. I, I do, but you do too. But, right, but, so but there's, it's, a, there's one, right? Yeah, We're, both something... hot. We're both hot older men. Yeah. Chicks dig us. Really? Like older men? Shut up. See, you need to learn to love yourself a little more. <laughs> I hate to say it, Drew, but you need to like look in the mirror every now and then. Come my, on, you're my jacked thing, and stuff. My thing, listen, my thing is if some woman really were interested in me, I'd be yeah. like, honey, something's wrong. With I mean, her. a young woman. Like a young woman, I'd be like, no, 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 come I on. I think no, that too. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> 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 not, not for your own good. Not because I don't want to do this. It's just because yeah. for your own good, this yeah. is not, something's wrong. Yeah, I think for a minute there, because you're right, of the self-deprecation thing where somebody like that would like me, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? And what's wrong with me that makes you see that <laughs> yeah. that would work? Mm. And, and, I'm, and it's like, do I have a, uh, uh, a broken beaker going on? Oh, like, for sure you hey. do. Right. But, 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 I also, but I also feel like you have a responsibility to somebody like that not to gratify that impulse. Yeah. Like you have a responsibility to go, honey, great, thank you, no. It's yeah. like a teacher or something. I've had a like, lot yeah. of uh, like bad traits, but I'm very lucky to not have that one. Uh. I've never been attracted to uh, younger people liking mm, me, mm. And, and, and even if it's like a- you know, this is it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting topic because I actually find our peer age very attractive, and and they all feel women tend to feel diminished as they age, and and I don't I don't see it I don't yeah, I, that's a shame to me because I I find them very attractive me at, too. All, at all ages. When I was on those dating sites, they never took me serious because I look like such a young m- maniac, you know. <laughs> Which is which is understandable. A young maniac. But I was I was into them. I mean, like every right. now and then I would swipe on yeah. girls my age, and yeah. they'd be like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> like, what are we gonna go do? Like, <laughs> light a doobie at the Metallica concert? Like, no, thank you. Hey, okay. so hey, I did something interesting lately. Uh, this, first of all, I got this. I got a cold too. This kind of whatever this is. Everybody, yeah. yeah. I had stem cells harvested from my bone marrow and my fat. Yeah. And stuck in my shoulders. Yeah. And it was a serious procedure i'm yeah. still effed up from it hurts it, it hurts i i'm cool with pain pain does not bother me i'm like yeah. i'm like you that way once again another similarity but but yeah that's that's for sure just the tissue damage and stuff and the amount of time and anesthesia and things i've just been messed up for two i we're at day 10 now and i'm like still like in molasses it really bothers. and, and i can't not use my interested shoulder. in the uh stem cells from the umbilical cord I don't need it. You, you because the, this but is there's mis- way more stem cells in the umbilical cord than from your own body. Mesenchymal stem cells, right? I'm not trying the oh. the bone so marrow. You use another word now. You've lost. So me. there's three kinds of stem cells. The ones that goes to bone and cartilage yeah. is in your fat and your bone marrow. It's accessible. And it's not it depleted from your no. age. No, you get lots of them. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and PRP. They did PRP on top of it. Yeah, I've done that too. Yeah. I got PRP in the groin once. Oh, for the hip leg? Yeah, and the, but he went into the groin. Yeah, yeah, It was yeah. like a long needle yeah, that went yeah. past my penis. Yeah. And I was like, dude, are you crossing the streams right now? Like, I'm like, how far does my penis go in, Drew? Well, it, I can feel it down my taint and then it disappears under my butthole. And then it goes up between, up through the, it, the urethra goes, all right. You, you, you have must the, have just missed it. No, so, so, you know, the things that swell up go all the way to the back, center yeah, of the butthole. Yeah, you can feel But it. the urethra curves up and goes through the prostate and goes up to the bladder. Ah, uh, son of a bitch. Yeah. Right, I got it. A little anatomy here. Yeah. I'm messed up. I'm kind of. I can't do much. I'm just. But it's really, healing well, and it's going to get better. That's why. Well, does, I, right? this this is amazing. I couldn't do this. Oh wow, I you were that. Oh, I. This this is it on this side. Oh dang. Yeah, it's bad. So does that mean you weren't working out? No, 
I'm not working out. Now I was working out. That's how I did this forever. Oh, man. Yeah, I, and I just was an idiot. I just, you know. Well, you were pretty jacked, so it did look, yeah. it did look like you're an idiot. I want to get I want to get it back somehow. Keep it going. So, so that means once this heals, then you'll be Hopefully, able to get or else again. I'll be looking at more surgery or something. Who knows? I just do so badly with surgery. I just, I'm just, every time I've ever had a surgery, like when I'm my prostate. You're a doctor. Now, I, I know. I just, I'm one of those people that you, tissue damage and anesthesia Fs me up. Oh. When, when I had my prostate out, I was sick for I wasn't right for six months. Six months. Is that a long time to recover from prostate? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Is it? Yeah. I thought prostate was pretty serious. It's a big operation, but you know, I was just I I, I felt like this, like always just in, like in, in molasses all the time. Oh, very wow. weird. I couldn't exercise intolerance and stuff. Very. It's like long COVID. Feels like long COVID. But then you got over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah, got back to it. Yeah, I'll get back. I'll when get you get back, we should. We'll go to, the, we'll go to the golds. Yeah, and then we'll like tell all the young ladies no, <laughs> but all those older ones. <laughs> hell yeah, you want to come oh to the gun show? Goodness. The gun show. Yeah, that's so. Funny. We can go in the parking lot and inflict pain on each other and tell them how much it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> just take a taser, just hit each other. Yeah. Look at us, man. You bring, you bring yours, I'll bring mine. Oh, there's questions coming in. Yeah, yeah, they're flying. All right. All right. If all anybody right. wants to call, well, there's all no right, point mentioning it. it. Hey, welcome to the Jason I'll Show. You're on with Dr. Drew Pensky. Jason, Dr. Drew. How's it going? Who's this? What's your name? What's up, guys? My name's Jack. I'm from uh, Boston. Big fan. Right yeah, up. what part of Boston? Um, South Shore, actually. Nice. Beautiful. What can Dude, we do I'm for so you? Glad that, uh, I, I jumped up to the, uh, to the All Access today just to catch this show. Um, Hell yeah. I wanted to say, Jason, like, obviously... Like, uh, you've helped so many people. You've helped me, too. Dr. Drew, I'm a mega Loveline fan. I actually uh, I listen to back episodes on YouTube every day. Wow. That, that to me, is amazing that the, the classic Lovelines, yeah. ha are, have, <laughs> have, they have a life. I mean, they're legendary. It's wild. Uh, the Jason Ellis show would have had a back catalog if Sirius loss. XM weren't. Maybe there's somebody that was collecting them. You never know. A fan has ha, has them, so I yeah. think they're on YouTube, but not like in store, like storage, like you have. Love like we got him. Giovanni cataloged, every, and he goes out and finds ones that are missing and stuff. It's crazy, man. I, does really interesting. A, does he want a job? He, maybe. Anyway, that'd be sick. What's your question, yeah, man? Drew, you guys are still doing it, man. You're still helping people. Um, Drew, I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, I'm 35 years old. Um, I was wondering, I, like, I'm I'm in pretty good shape, but I've always wanted to see if I could get. Uh, much bigger like if i could start picking up heavier weights and yeah. working out a little bit harder yeah. is it too late for that or am i still okay you think oh no you're fine you're fine be careful <laughs> I, I you know i messed up my shoulders doing that i i loved lifting heavy weights i loved it i just loved that feel like like i heard arnold talking about it i could relate really strongly yeah. but he of course is on all kinds of steroids and stuff but yeah i love uh, working out i just never really switched it on and I, like i i like I, i'm a blue belt jujitsu like i i train nice. i work out but i've always wanted to get bigger you know big big is easy Lift. It's very. It's. I. I've tried a million different things, and if, if it's getting big is your goal, lift heavy weights. It's very simple. Lift <laughs> yeah, heavy yeah. weights. Do full motion. Watch the joints. That's my new injunction against it. Yeah, and if you're but, a jujitsu blue belt, uh, you uh, you don't care about your joints. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, plus you can <laughs> limit. You start limiting your motion. Right? It could screw up your jujitsu. I think if you're not careful. Right. Would you recommend sure. like um, any sort of stretches or physiotherapy or or uh, uh, like I mean, certain kind because I, I have a physiotherapist that makes me do kinds of workouts with like a straight bar from like because I have terrible shoulders from all the broken and dislocated and separated shoulders of my. You're doing straight bar just over, over your head kind of stuff. Yeah, and all these yeah. different twists and what what those are all but they, good. They have straightened my body out. Like I had yeah. a lower shoulder mm -hmm. and she helped me bring it level to this to even to the other one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean to do it properly, you should have an evaluation, get some proper. Oh yeah, she definitely yeah. evaluates. So, but yeah. but I, again, it, he does. He's he's still very young. You're fine. Go exercise. Right have on. a good time with it. Make sure you hit every body part, every motion. You know, it's just it, be careful over your head. That's where you get into real trouble. And watch I, your back. I, I follow a lot of uh, Catherwood's advice from his podcast. So he's man. very good. Yeah. It's, I got it going on over here with you guys, man. I'm yep. really um, really pumped. Uh, Drew, I gotta um, I gotta say, man, love line. <laughs> I'm in recovery. I'm in a healthy relationship. You know, I got some time. I'm doing well. Um, good. Jay, uh, you've helped me so much, Doug. I sucked a girl's dick and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, so, uh, there's my contribution, yeah. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have no idea, Jay. And watching you go through this, like, dude, I got divorced listening to your show. I Like, my son was born listening to the show. Like, 
I'm watching you, man, and I love you, and I, I really I see you doing better than ever, and I'm pumped. That's, Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I, I feel the same way. Too. I feel the same way. It's funny. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Have yeah. a good day. Yeah, dude. Right on. You guys go. Bye. Uh, you, people do love you. They do. I don't know what that is. I mean, I'm not. No, no, I mean, there's a lot to you and stuff. But, but I, I, I that that thing I was talking about, that tender something. Mm. I, I know what they're talking about. I feel it in you. I, I you know, it's, it's something. It'll, we'll see more of it as you get on in your recovery. That's so what that's I. What I'm saying. That's what I feel too. Yeah. Jason Ellis Show. You're on with Dr. Drew Pensky. Dr. Drew, Jason Ellis, how you doing? Oh, good day, mate. Where are you calling from? Happy to Happy holidays. I'm from Connecticut. Hell yeah. yeah, nice. A lot of New England today. It's good. Well, one. I wanted to say this Patreon is awesome. Proud to be a fan. Sure. Won't hold up time. So I know Dr. Drew, addiction knowledge is right. Is that how you say it? Yeah. All right. So I'm 18 months sober, no drinking. Um, working the hospital, you know, so I see a lot of, a lot of trauma and stuff. I'm grateful where I am. Came close to dying. Um, anyway, I have my close family members, my father and my mother both were uh, drinking for a long time growing up. They stopped. And then uh, two weeks ago, they decided to pick back up. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So we're a week out from Christmas, and I think this is the first time I'm really thinking, you know, there's going to be no family involvement. It's And it's tough. It's jarring. Wait, hold on a second. So so, so you're thinking you're not going to join your family this Christmas because they're using and drinking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I, this is all my siblings agreeing. They're also uh, not going to go. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's disastrous. They've basically... Uh, just okay. Kind of chose alcohol over us. Do they? Wow. Have you made? Yeah, it happens a lot. It's alcohol. Is, it's man. That it's cunning, baffling, powerful. Yeah. You know. Uh, so have you made it clear to? Because you can actually help them by making it clear to them that they have chosen alcohol over their family. And are they? They get that. Are they cool with that? Have well, you told them that? I did. Okay. I did because, like I said, I'm 18 months sober from drinking i'm 26 yeah. i almost yeah. died i was going to chronic tonic seizures oh my god i talked to my mother last week i said look you could pick this one thing and lose everything else yeah or you could let go of that one thing you know and i did it you know that's your choice you know, i try and don't beat myself up over it and so, so here told her so, that so, and then she left okay and wow. and so this is who 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 left his mother his mom and so, so you have to decide what you can, what you need to do to, to protect yourself. You just got to make that decision. You got to do it. Now, one thing you can do, you know, most alcoholic addicts do need to do some Al-Anon because you, you, most alcoholic addicts are raised around alcoholic addicts. That's yeah. the, it's a genetic thing. So yeah. Al-Anon would be a very good thing right now for you. You're going to need to do it someday probably anyway. And really discuss it with the recovering codependency peers and see if they agree with you that the best thing for you is cold turkey with, with the family versus you go in for a little strike and say, hi, Merry Christmas, and go back out to the recovering, the, the uh, codependency recovering community to get your support. That's another way of doing this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I actually, I have a sponsor. Um, I go to AA. You know, of I've course. met a great community of, of course. older, wise people. And, what are know, they, and they're, telling you just to, they're telling you just to bail out? They, you know, they give me spiritual advice and they say, you know, pray and, and you know, it's meaningful what they say, but yeah. I just, it seems like when I ask these questions, they don't understand that, you know, it's five I don't, I don't have intentions to drink, but there's, there's never been definitive answers as to what to do in the circumstances. Because they, they shouldn't be, 18 months sobriety, they shouldn't be making the decisions for you. Right. You know what I mean? You sh they should be setting up the circumstance for you to do the right thing for your recovery. And I agree. Yeah, I yeah. agree with them. Just being very supportive. So while you make the right choice, I know first you. things first is you. I, mean, yeah. I hate to say that, but yeah. like you staying sober is the number one yeah. thing to, that is to think one. about. Yeah. You know, so if you, if you go and you think that's not going to help, then don't go. Yeah, but certainly would, not without a bunch of codependency support. For but sure. if you think you can handle, like Drew said, going for a little bit and going, "Hey guys, I got to cut out," obviously because I'm, you know, I mean, I'm sober and this is making me uncomfortable as as hell. Then. Then, then you can choose that too. But just make sure eighteen months you you got to take care of yourself. Yeah, you're still pretty pretty early, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's what it is. You know, I'm not worried about the drinking or anything. It's just you know, this is two decades of trauma. You know, my mother leaving me at six years old and this and that. There you I go. Can't sit under a Christmas tree with my family no. while they, you know, knowingly no. chose. And I'm looking around, going, what are all these gifts and presents mean? If you know, I know at the end of the day, you guys chose you know, to pick back up and kind Man. of just repeat the cycle. Yeah, but, You're helping me right now, dude. Yeah, and and chose to pick back up. I mean, 
It's crazy. It's crazy on this. They chose I, not to focus on their recovery, and then they will naturally pick back up. I, there was a That's girl in a meeting works. the other day that she'd been sober for 30 years, and she was saying, this is the first time that I've ever spoken. I've been on several Zooms, obviously, but not in a face-to-face -face meeting. And mm. she said, like, 30 years of sobriety, I know. And she, she pointed at me because I had spoken before saying – how much it meant what I said, what I was going through. She's like, I know we're not supposed to interact, but I just want to say it meant a lot. But she still says, she's like, she's heard her own voice tell her, 30 years, like at this point, are you really even an alcoholic Yo, anymore? And she's boy. like, I, but I, I caught yeah. what that voice is yeah. and obviously know that I need to go to a meeting. Yeah, yeah. But just yeah. hearing her say, because when she said that, I was like, 30 years, wait, and you didn't even talk. Like, you, you, my, my addiction said, you probably aren't even an alcoholic. And then that's what her addiction said too. Right. So right. that's yeah. how it works. It's all saying the same thing. Yeah. But I'm sorry, man. That is. Tough. I'm not looking, you know, I'm building character. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm 26. I had a doctor tell me, he goes, you sees again. I, I can't tell you if you're going to live or die. Yeah. You know, I don't have that fork in the road to say I can maybe drink again. No. It's, it's no. Life or death. Stay, I'll lose everything I got, you yep. know? Yep. Yes, sir. But, uh, Keep no, working, you guys man. did great. I don't want to hold the line up. You guys, happy holidays. Same to you. And I'll, I'll keep listening. Rock on. Thanks. Good, good things ahead for you, my friend. Man, that is. And and I get to see the miracles of sobriety. That that kid will flourish in his program. It's just amazing to see it. It's... That's the thing that is uh, that one of the things that I'm so attracted to is mm. when people speak and and talk about this. The miracles. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Pretty exciting. Because I've always been such a you know I grew up with such a. Uh, uh, my parents were so, or my father was so against religion or, or, or a miracle or luck or, yeah. you know I mean, to the point where now looking back, it's, it, it, that's what remind like at one point I was an atheist and then I realized you're, you're an atheist because you're kind of religious. <laughs> like you say you hate him so much because of the things that happened in your childhood where my angle is if god's real how did he let those people do that to me when i was a little kid yeah. because if that like i i know what happened to me now and there's no god that allows that but it's not it's not a dude watching that like pulls strings and goes oh that's bad that guy will be say like it doesn't work like that and i think when religion twists it into yeah. You know, Cartoons. this guy can make this happen, and the reason he didn't make it, ha it's like, nah, man, it's it's not a it's not a guy pull it, click and switch each to their own. So I don't but, trigger but anybody. To be fair, though, I mean, the Catholics have a whole field of studies how why bad things happen called theodicy. Why why does God allow bad things? The, the people, philosophers, you know, think Thomas Aquinas thought about that stuff. Neil you know? deGrasse Tyson, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson saying that uh, he's a he's a old old powerful old seeing that whole thing and he's mm. like if if he is then he's either bad or deficient or, or not all seeing <laughs> right. all powerful right and well the theodicy world smart. again I'm, I'm i'm not agnostic on this stuff but but the the theodicy world would say it's it's a path towards something that he in his infinite wisdom he understands and we don't yeah i know yeah whatever it's like, I'm not angry anymore. <laughs> I'm like, that's cool, man. That's if that's what you're talking about, you go ahead and talk about that. I gotta do me. And I, I've the more I pray, the more I feel like something's listening and that I am not a crazy person talking to the sky. Prayer's that an interesting thing. Shows me that the more I do this, the more you know, because to me <clears throat> I've been really good at something. I've been on the cutting edge of the best human in the world at this particular thing. And what did it take for me to get there? There was a lot of uh, where even if I didn't believe it, I, I faked it till I made it. Like I, I was like, I'm just going to believe it until it became true and real. And, 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 and it's not a book. It's not a like I lived it. There was a time there where I know deep down I do not have talent. I don't have it. Like when I started, there were two kids. They were like chubby and one was obese and they were way better than me for the first three years. But I lived with it in my head all day when I wasn't doing it because I had to go to school or something. I was skating in my mind. And then when I was at the ramp, I was the, just just so in love with it that it, it took over me and my body changed into an athletical body and I became 
one of the best guys on the planet doing it. I'm, I'm fascinated by that kind of thing. The humans do that. The, the, uh, you want me to get the Elon Musk biography, part of your audio books. Is, I was going to say, is it on audio? I'm I don't sure want to read it. But he, um, he's that, he just relentless, relentless. It just, that's fascinating to me. I think I had some, I don't know that I have that anymore, but I had that for a while. Do you what? want to hang out with me a little bit more and get it back? <laughs> Maybe. Because you got to believe, did you? are One of the most talented people on the planet. Look what you did. Look at you. You're Doctor Drew. It, it, maybe that's because of the relentlessness. That's I, devastating. I, you're you're a, you're a, you're sorry, YouTube. You're an animal. Well, you're a beast. <laughs> You are. You mean that in a good way. Well, maybe you know? I'm still relentless then. I just don't, I'm not as aware of it. Well, then wake up. Okay. Because you are. We are. We're so hot. Chicks want us so bad. <laughs> no, we won't marry you. But still, maybe I will. <laughs> in about a year. In about a year. Yeah. Not right now. In about a year. Uh, Ellis, Dr. Drew, I'm yeah. starting to feel some pain in the outside of my knee. When I squat down, I have to stand up pushing. Oh, man. With Held my right leg, or yeah. climb a lot of, or if I have to climb a lot of yeah, stairs, yeah, yeah. That's a, suggestions for physical therapy type exercises uh, I can do to avoid a trip to the doctors. Oof. Let's look up lateral compartment syndrome. I think that's what he's got there. I'm, I am not an expert, or I, I actually was going to be an orthopedist for about two seconds and gave that up. Lateral compartment. I've had that. Yeah, I have and too. I went to Bio Accelerator and I got. Stem, stem cells, cells. yeah like. pain and grinding you localize the lateral aspect of the knee patellofemoral syndrome so when it hurts here when you go down the stairs and things yep uh how do you treat it unloading bracing okay so rest and then brace keep it i think the one of the key things is make sure the knee tracks properly like really yeah. keep it right over the yeah i will say uh walk some people walk poorly and and I've noticed like uh, from because I've broken things or torn things and limped in a certain way where it started to make my whole body crooked, and then doing physical therapy and then making a mental note every time I walk, it's which is crazy. Like people don't realize I still do it where I walk and make sure that my toes are pointing straight, exactly. and then when I and when I step, yes. I I lift my heel off yep. the ground. Yep. Like from boxing when I first started training, I realized I was a flat footed fighter. So I just always was on my toes all the time, not in the gym. I'm on my toes walking in the kitchen. I'm on, I, I always try to to remember it all the time. Cause you, so here's what, here's what they say. Avoid activity that causes it. That's what I was doing when I had it. Use anti-inflammatory. All right. Physical therapy, of course. Use inserts for your shoes if you need adjustment. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a good idea. Yeah. How do you feel about um, Advil's and all that? Because I saw I, I am not a fan. Bad for your stomach. It's bad for your stomach, causes ulcers, but I worry what it does to the kidney. I've seen kidney oh, wow. failure from anti-inflammatories, and it always worries me. Particularly people use it regularly. I, I get very really worried about that. I much better use Tylenol, unless you're an alcoholic. Then Tylenol will get a little dangerous. But but Wait, if why you're, is Tylenol different if you're an alcoholic? Because it's metabolized by the liver, and you can get bad liver stuff going God, if you're no not careful. Yeah. So is there one that doesn't do something to your liver? All Here's what everybody needs to know. All medication... This is what my, taught, my dad was a family practitioner. I was raised with this notion. All medication are dangerous. Everything. It's dangerous. I don't care what it is, whether it's Tylenol or aspirin. Dangerous. The trick with medication is because we're trying to adjust physiology. So you're, you're really giving a powerful chemical agent. It's got to be worth the risk. The reward has to be worth the risk. We, we During COVID, we just completely abandoned that. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. But it's always risk-reward, risk-reward in everything you put in your mouth or shoot in your body. Uh, Drew, well, can you ask Drew about anal fissures? I had one of these, man. Nice, huh? I got to be on, what's the next drug after morphine? Jeez, dilated. Yeah. Uh. That was... Sorry, but that was awesome. Mm. Sorry, it was a highlight for, for a couple of seconds. Yeah, yeah. anal fissures. My doctor says um, I have them, and I just want to know how serious it is. Where I, where I have to have? Will I have to have surgery? Not usually or for can fissures. Can I put it off? It, it, if it's a you know, should take I wait the, until the pain? Well, take the treatment. You can usually treat them, and it, it might be a fistula. That's a bigger problem. A what? Fistula, which is uh, like a. Like, I've done that. You've had fistula? No, I'm joking. Okay. I'm no, it's a, that's fist. That's just fisting. This is fistula. <laughs> there you go. You okay. got it. So, so it's I a- I had a it, fistula one time. <laughs> you did? You did one or I, you had no, one? No, I did one. I'm not doing it. I'm not that gay. Easy. 
<laughs> so it is a it's a sort of a burrowing like it's like like something comes out of the colon burrows into the soft tissue and comes out like out of your butt cheek oh yeah or near the anus you know it's and it's a it's a like a goat horn like a canal no no like a canal like a, like a like a gopher is digging through yeah a tiny little infected canal and it can be something from crohn's disease very commonly has that dang yeah yeah it's not fun i got a question about buttholes <laughs> I got uh, hemorrhoids, right? And I had some internal ones cut the other day. Wow. And it, yeah, yeah, that was a strange feeling. But then I got outer ones, scarred, scars. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, because I was like, I don't like my butthole. It's probably the ugliest part of my body. And I and, and I do show my butthole to people. In being, I show my butthole to girls too. Like I, I mix it up. But I, I wanted to get him cut off. And he said that it's a very painful procedure. Yes, yes. And he said for two weeks, you're going to be like, I've seen people go crazy from it. It's so painful. Right. If I'm an addict, I can't do pain meds. You I shouldn't. That's really not, not, you want to don't, I, I usually advise people, you know, I, people have to take pain medication after surgery sometimes, but you don't want to do it early in your sobriety. It'll trigger you and stuff. Just let a year or so go by before you readdress this. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm okay with that. Cause I don't really need to like, I, that's the other good thing about my first year is I'm not looking to really do a lot with my butthole lately. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good policy for recovery. I'm more into hugs. Good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like hugging people and trying to put my heart where their heart is. Is yeah. that gay? No. All right. Just making sure. Trying to think what your fans would say. Right, it would be a little bit, but in a in a, in a non in a different way, like in a yeah. Way. Why would yeah. that be gay? So, yeah. well, we have a question in the chat. Go ahead, Miles. Hey, doctor, I've had two double lung transplants Ooh. in the last six years. Oh my goodness! Last three oh. years ago, I'm relatively young, fifty nine, and fairly fit considering the extensive recovery. Wow. I still feel a lot of pain in my sternum. Ugh. Nothing seems to work. Ugh. I was on two ECMOs at the same time Sheesh. and was in a damn in a two week coma. Oh my god! This guy's had his lungs trans the full lung transplant. I didn't even know they could do that twice. They can do so. That. We had a dead person's lungs put in his lungs. Uh, I I don't cadavers. I suppose. Yeah, it's probably recently dead. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's bad. Can you get synthetic lungs? No. No, well, but he was on essentially what we ha the best closest thing we have to a synthetic lung was called ECMO. Extra is that the machine? It's yeah. not in you; it's out of you. Right, extracorporeal. So he has to be in a bed. Well, that was when he was in a coma and is failing sure. and before he got the lungs. He wants so, uh, some insight into the pain. All right, so the I I have I'm not an expert in this area, but I've I've, I've had you know, whenever your sternum gets split, yeah, and he's had it split a couple of times, right. Uh, what happens is sometimes, first of all, it can get infected. I've had people actually get fungal infections in their sternum. So make sure you might want to get something called a gallium scan or some sort of bone scan to see if there's any inf infection in there, number one. Number two, you know, they, they tie the sternum together with wires. Got yeah. Some metal. Yeah. And so, and it sometimes it can not heal and keep rubbing, and it's just this constant source of pain. I, I don't know. But your know. ribs are not like fully attached. Correct. So every breath, like Ugh, it's like having oh. a broken bone almost. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I would uh, get get back to the surgeon and just go, hey, we there's got to be some sort of solution where there's re securing the sternum or something, making sure it's not infected. Make sure it's maybe there's you know there's things you can do to help bone heal. Yeah. But they should have some expectation that this you know what they can do and what's going to get better and what they can do to help you. So that, that's rough, man. But I'm Seriously. I'm glad you had the lung transplant. Have two lung transplants. It's amazing. And he's you're alive here. and talking about working yeah. out. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. That's science, man. Oh, oh, oh. That is so impressive. Like, you are still here. Also, uh, self-pity really diminished after this story. Good. He's helped you. What the hell am I bitching about? Right. I, don't, I mean, I do want that scar, but not that bad. That's a cool look. Just I'm just thinking, uh, somebody, um, I'll tell you who later, uh, related to a friend of ours, had to have lung transplant from COVID. And didn't go well. And he was complaining. I always remember this, that it felt like breathing through a straw when he had the new lungs. Like, oh, oh can you imagine that? No. Oh, my God. It's like in that movie Nobody where he hits him in the neck with a pipe and then he cuts his neck open and puts a little milkshake straw in there. Ugh. And it keeps the guy alive. And I'm like, I don't know if that's really that alive. Uh. Straw breathing doesn't seem that cool. No. Sometimes I try to put a straw in my mouth and go in the cold plunge and just have the straw out and breathe through the straw. You end up 
sucking them in your nose, right? <laughs> I know, no, I, no, I put my hand on my nose, okay. but the cold makes it hard to breathe in yeah, deep. Yeah. It's quite a challenge. Mm. Looks good for a video. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Drew. It's good to see you, man. Congratulations on all you're you. doing. It, I just, I love where you're at, and I uh, love you, and I just, I just, I just see good things. It just kind of gotta keep, keep, keep it going. I'm, keep I, on keeping on. I'm working, I'm working real hard, and yep. I'm very grateful for all my friends and family that are supporting me. I, I worry I about. I've never been more grateful about all those people because I feel like now I actually see and feel it for the first time. You feel a, it. I don't know you how feel long. It. You yeah. feel it. And, and same and, with all you guys too. And, and, and I worry about relationships taking you out in that first year. So be really careful about that. That's a common thing. Hey man, you don't know what it's like. You don't know. I, I had a lot of dating apps. They were my favorite thing to do. Like when I'm sitting down, I go on there and I talked to everybody. You know why I talked to everybody? Because there's a little bit of satisfaction in every single one of them that wanted to do something with me. Mm. And I know that that is the addiction. You don't need it. And that. now I do not do any of it. I don't look at any of it. You don't need it. You don't need I it. I know I don't need it. You, you're, you're getting nourished in a much richer way. I am. Yeah. And I get every day I get a yeah. little bit better with yeah. w without any yeah. extra highs or any of that stuff. I can't wait to start skating again. Good. I did a 540 at 52 wow and i did two shots of kratom that morning and oh. smoked two joints <laughs> and i'm thinking like I'm imagine gonna, what you could do straight that's what i was thinking yeah so yeah i might do a 900 probably not but shut up miles i could do one <laughs> he's probably right i got that thanks for being on check out after dark it's the oh, no. uh, we're after dark is going to wrap what? up. We're, oh. we're yeah. What are you going to do? Oh well, I'm, I'm focusing on this show we're doing. The streaming show my wife produces. It's called Ask Doctor Drew. It's at Doctor TV. Still doing ads. Glad I brought that doing, up. Yeah, I'm glad you did too. And uh, we're sort of wrapping up after dark in February. So oh yeah, so it's okay. It's, it's good. A, though, it's right? good. Okay, it was good. a great experience. I, okay. I in fact weirdly ran into Christina and Tom yesterday in Laguna. Just ran right into them. They're here. Yeah, they should be on here. So yeah. Anyway, love you guys. See you next week. See ya. Don't die.